Hey, everybody, welcome to the Marquee DJ Photo Booth Conference podcast. I am your host, KC, and I am joined by someone that absolutely none of you know, and he is a newbie to the uh, to the DJ educational world, uh, a good friend of mine that I got the pleasure to work in conjunction with a few years ago. We won't go back how far, Benny, but uh, quite some time ago, when uh, we were Kiss FM and I was under contract with them, here is the world famous because I said so, Mr. Harry Leg. How are you, Harry? <laughs> hey, I'm doing great, Casey. Thanks a lot for having me. Thank you for coming on. So super excited. And when I jokingly said nobody knows you, nobody does know you in the mobile DJ world unless perhaps they had some sort of a background in radio. Um, <clears throat> Harry, I, I worked in under contract with a radio station that Harry uh, was a uh, program director for and such, and we'll get into his background in a minute. But one thing that has never, ever been touched upon at any DJ convention that I've been attending in the last 20, 25 years is voiceover. And we all use the microphone and every wedding couple wants us to have that magical stadium announcer voice or radio voice so that when we say the new Mr. and Mrs. or our wedding couple or whatever the terminology is, depending on the couple we're working for, they want their friends and family up on their feet. So it's always been about the voice, but we've never talked about the possibility of additional income through voiceovers. We've talked over the years about karaoke, trivia nights, car shows, all kinds of other things, but nothing about uh, voiceovers, which let's face it, <clears throat> you don't have to be out on a Tuesday night doing karaoke to a room full of drunks until 1 a.m. if you can uh, get the right connections and, and work your voice. And so Harry here is going to uh, be talking at the Marquee Show about the one, two, threes and the ABCs of getting into voiceover. So Harry, let's start with your background. So okay. um, let, let's start at the beginning and I'm just gonna let you roll so that everybody kind of gets to know who you are. Oh, thank you. All right, well, so um, I began in radio really, really early. Uh, I was literally in fifth or sixth grade and wow. fell in love with radio and used to call the DJs on the request line back when that was a thing. Okay. And uh, finally, one day I got, for those of you in Chicago, you'll know Joe Bohannon uh, of B96 sure. fame, Eddie and Joe Bo. He was working nights in my hometown of Cleveland uh, at the Top 40 station. I used to bug the crap out of him. And finally, one day I, I said, can I come see the studio? And he said, sure. And And boom, that began it and uh it, it uh started where he would throw me in the uh, production studio the radio stations recording studios are called production studios give me the reel of tape a stack of 45s and i'd record myself talking over the intros of the songs as if i was on the air to practice and making demos and watching him on the air and all that sort of stuff so i began really early did my first on-air show at 14 years old um was hired at a top 40 station right out of high school Okay. Um, and have traveled the country and lived and worked in eight different cities. Um, the highlights, besides working in my hometown, which is really cool, of Cleveland, nice. um, I worked uh, in Chicago uh, with mm -hmm. you at Kiss yep. FM, and then we switched that to the dance station, Energy 92.7 and 5. Right. Uh, from there, I took a brief uh, step out of the radio business and worked for Strictly Rhythm, Groovalicious is their West Coast guy in L.A. because they were a New York-based label. Right. And uh, when they, I was music director at Energy in Chicago, so I knew all the record label people and all that. And uh, things were kind of changing in the radio world, all the voice tracking, uh, Energy, the parent company was having some difficulties. So I saw the writing on the wall. Okay. And I'm sitting there at breakfast with the vice president of uh, Strictly Rhythm, Barry. And uh, she said they were looking for someone in L.A. And I went, really? Hmm. <laughs> so a couple weeks later, I'm moving to L.A. Right. Um, they had been in business for 12 years as one of, if not the hottest dance label on the planet. They moved me to L.A. And about a year later, they go out of business. Right. Oh, my God. Um, but Such then is I got, the music industry. Well, yeah, the, it's it's right. a roller coaster ride. And mm -hmm. then um, really cool story. One hour after officially being let go from Strictly Rhythm, I get a call from the program director of Kiss FM L.A. And he goes, Harry. Are you still working for that record label? 
Well, <laughs> funny you should ask, John. As of an hour ago, no. <laughs> well, when are you available to come in? You tell this me. This was pre-American Idol Ryan Seacrest? Or this Ryan was Seacrest? so... It was like season one. Okay. And I, I remember sitting in jock meetings right across the table from Ryan. He wasn't the big star that he is now just yet. Right. Um, so and in those the, days, you guys made about the same amount of money. Now it's a little <laughs> different. Well, you know, I don't know about that. I ain't going to touch that with the gotcha. football. But anyway, uh, John Ivey was our PD. Ryan was still at Star. He And Rick Dees was still the morning guy. Oh, wow. Head. Rick Dees. So, There's a flash from the past. Yeah, exactly. So um, anyway, so that's how I got on Kiss FM. And uh, from there, went to New York City to become the creative director and the voice of 103.5 KTU, the sure. legendary dance station. Absolutely. Which was a dream of mine to work at. Um, Great. In 1996, when it signed on the air, I was working at a rock station in Rochester, New York, and I was out of my mind to work at KTU. I couldn't get the time of day back then from Frankie Blue or anyone at the station. Right. And it's funny how you keep going on your career path and things change. And uh, yeah, I, I moved New York. And I've been here ever since. I worked there for just about four years, 2003, uh, going into 2007, before there was massive management change, regime change. They let go of half right. the staff. Oh, wow. And I was part of half that staff. Hmm. Um, and when I lost the job, my immediate gut reaction was, well, I got to move again, find another you know, radio gig. But then I said, hold on, I just bought a house which they say is the radio person's curse by a house. You lose your gig. And yep, right. it happened one year later. Um, plus my partner had no, you know, if I had told, if I had said, Hey, we're moving to Sacramento, not to make fun of Sacramento, but you know, after being in Chicago, LA, New York, and a bunch of other cities, ah, I kind of, I was done. Right. Plus you begin to see in the radio business that, it's almost a never ending path. Each job I'd had lasted two, three, four years before there was some bull crap, some management change, ownership change, format change. And yeah, you can get lucky and have a gig that lasts for decades, but really that's not the norm. And right. as you get older, um, you don't want to keep moving and you become less employable. You know, there's a little ageism. They, they don't mm -hmm. want to hire the person with a ton of experience. Sometimes they want to hire the kid. No offense. Cause I was there, you know, that's going to work for half the price. Right. So I had already had a bunch of voiceover clients because I was working in radio and it's something I already did, but it wasn't my full time focus. It was always just really side money. And and I'm a Pro Tools, you know, uh, producer and all that sort of thing. So studio gear and the setup I already had. I didn't have to rely on the radio station I was working for for a studio. So when I lost the gig at KTU, um, that's when I said, all right, voiceover full time. And uh, now it's 2021 and I'm still doing it. <laughs> it Very is good. a roller coaster when you work for yourself. I will tell you that, but it is uh, putting the roof over my head. So, and what will be some of the things that we've heard you on without even realizing it? That's kind of hard to say. I mean, I voiced uh, for on commercial clients. I voiced for uh, Nike, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, some of the big marquee brands. Um, one of the bigger things you may have heard me on if you're into sports uh, I was the voice of the NBC Sports Radio Network, which was on over 400 stations for about seven years from the very beginning of the network until March of uh, 2020 when they decided to pull the plug as COVID was shutting down sports. Wow. So that went away. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm the voice of a, a number of stations around the nation and um, around the world. I actually have an international roster. Uh, oh, wow. I'm on in Australia and uh, 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 Ireland and Jordan and the United Arab Emirates and all over the <laughs> place. What? I'm trying to picture an American voice on like an Australian station. How that would sound. I'll, I'll tell about, you. Okay. That, I get that question all the time. <laughs> Got it. Um, and there's, there's a couple things to think of with that. One is, you know how here in the States, sometimes a British voice sounds mm -hmm. kind of hip and cool. Right. So they'll purposely use a British voice for that edge. Right. Well, when you think about what, what is one of our greatest exports here in the U.S., it's our entertainment, whether it's Hollywood sure. or our music. So you go to Australia, and not that they don't have Australian artists. Of course they mm -hmm. do. But the majority are still our artists. Right. They're playing Matchbox 20 and Justin Bieber in the weekend sure. and on and on and on. So to have an American-accented 
English voice doing right. some of their imaging, I guess, th- thank goodness for me, adds to some of the hip cool factor, I guess. You think like a nice hip Brooklyn female voice might work at that station? Or? <laughs> no idea. No. How you doing? <laughs> the female version of that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, very cool. So um, I've twisted your arm to uh, come on out to Chicago in June. Beautiful Can't Chicago. Wait. And yeah. Aries lived here, he knows. So if you haven't been to Chicago, he will lie to you as well, like me, that it is amazing in the month of June. No, it really June, is. June is the time to go. City. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Now, not so much, you know, right. in the winter, but uh, but the summer in Chicago is fantastic. And with the way the country is opening up, I'm pretty confident that you could even make it a little uh, side road trip and really enjoy the beautiful city of Chicago. I grew up here. I live in the city. Um, I can't speak highly enough about it. So um, as long as you don't get involved in the politics of it, you're, you're totally yeah. fine. Um, but, um, Harry's going to be speaking at the marquee show, June 22nd, 23rd and 24th. And what can we kind of expect? Like, okay, we know you've just given your, your resume and it sounds fantastic. So what would somebody expect? Like, what would you expect them to be penning on their notepad or, well, sure. I, you know, taking notes, it, it could be very, very appropriate for what I'll be, uh, the info I'll be giving. Um, as you said at the very beginning of the podcast, uh, most people that are in the mobile DJ uh, business, which I did early in my career, I owned a couple of rigs and I was out there doing the weddings and the bar and bat mitzvahs and the school proms. So even though it's been quite a few years, I, I have been there doing that. So I understand, um, you know, that you're behind a mic all the time. Right. And there's a good chance you have just about all the necessary equipment already to record yourself doing voiceover. And now with with podcasting and that probably even more so for those that have pivoted during COVID to do um, to be spinning live on Twitch and, and everything else, there's probably an even better chance of it than there was even a year ago. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a very good point. Um, you may need a different microphone than the one you're using live, but you right. know we, we'll talk about those things. It's not like you have to spend a ton of money. Everyone okay. thinks you got to go get the thousand dollar mic. Yeah, that's down the line if and when. Um, but w- one of the things to consider um, is right now, <laughs> every Joe Blow thinks they can do voiceover. Right. They've got their USB mic. They plug it into their computer. They get on Fiverr. Oh, dear God. And right. they think, you know, I'm going to. So, so doing voiceover is a business like anything else. And there is a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of money potentially to be made. Um, but it is a business and should be approached as such. Just like any industry that's out there, there's no one single path to get in. But there are some very definite things that you need to do, that you need to know about um, in order to do it properly and to be taken seriously. So anyone that's looking at, hey, yeah, I should do some voiceover and potentially have some side money or possibly a main gig doing that, um, I will help lead you down that path to show you the main things you need to do. And also you will discover if it's for you or not, you might hear what you need to do and go, Oh, that's a lot more than I thought was involved. No, thank you. Or yes, I want that. So that's kind of the information that I hope to impart. Good. 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 And think about this way too, for those of you that we, we all experience burnout or there's different times of the year seasonally where certain times of the year are busier or slower. So if your calendar, especially coming out of COVID is a little bit lighter and you, you want to hit, you want to take advantage of that time with your family, your partner, whatever it might be, you can, uh, you can, you can delegate. And if you've got an income stream coming in from somewhere else, you can be home to watch bad reruns of the love boat on Saturday night. <laughs> if that's yes. what you want to do. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. One of the other things that, that I'll <clears throat> tell you that I love about voiceover now, of course, it's been different while we're in the pandemic currently, Sure, but you can travel and still do your voiceover. You, okay. quit, you don't need the big studio rig. I bring my laptop and even my, my phone doubles as a backup because it's all digital. As long as you have an interface to get your mic into the phone or into whatever recording device you're using, I can be in a hotel room. I could be, you know, visiting friends, a 
uh, parents. I could be on vacation if you are one that wants to work on vacation. Right. Um, and, and it's really not that big of a deal. So uh, that's one of the things that I love about it, too. I'm not like golden handcuffed to my studio. I can mm -hmm. go off and do what I want. And that's one of the beauties of this. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So what are kind of ranges that somebody would expect to make like from the beginning, like maybe they're just voicing over a local, I don't know, auto repair commercial for someone that the radio stations not doing, or what? Like, give ranges of what something might be. <laughs> it is the wild, <sighs> wild west as okay. far as rates. Now, the, you know, the, and these are some of the things I will definitely go over Great. and explain in more detail. But to give you an idea. Um, when you are first beginning, you have to determine how much are you going to charge just to turn the light switch on and okay. do anything behind the mic. And I can't tell you what that number should be. Maybe it's $50. Maybe it's $150. Maybe it's $300. I can't tell you what that number should be. There's union work and there's non-union work. One of the other things that you'll need to know and understand is it's also about usage. So I'll give you one example here. Let's say the local, um, I don't know, camera shop down the street here wants to hire me to voice a little 30 second thing for their website. Right now we know when it's on the web, it's worldwide, but, um, you know, there's nobody across the country going to my local, you know, camera stores website, Sure, sure. but I'm going to charge them for that 30 second read is radically different than if, uh, Kodak or Fuji wants me to do a 30 second read on their website because that is worldwide or countrywide okay. or whatever. So it's about usage. Scalable even, by even audience. Though, even though it's the exact same amount of work. Um, is the commercial that I'm voicing airing on local radio? Is it airing regionally? Is it airing nationally? Are they also using it on TV? Are they using it on cable? Are they using it on the internet? Are they using it internal for corporate stuff? All of those things come into play. What you would charge to voice for the local Toyota dealer is not what I would charge to voice for Toyota nationwide. Sure. So even though it's 30 seconds, perhaps. So right. it really is all over the place. And when you're beginning, <clears throat> um, you don't have to worry so much about that. You're going to find out, figure it out. There's also rate guides things like that. Um, and then, you, you know, you're going to look at um, down the line if you have an agent that's helping to negotiate those things for you and whatnot, but you will not have that up front. Um, okay. If ever, you don't have to have an agent to do well either. Um, right. There's a lot of people that do not, and they make a ton of money from non-union uh, versus union as well. So and, both sides and of the coin I'm are sure good. there's lots of people on fiber making money too. So, you know, I mean, everybody... I'm not a proponent of that. I will officially say okay. that, but yes, okay. there are, there are. Right. See, my big thing is in the DJ world, there's, there's people that are a great fit for a backyard birthday party. And then there are people that are a great fit for a high end wedding and you just have to figure it out and, and kind of go from there. So I think for Fiverr, there are, there's an audience that's appropriate for it, but maybe not for a commercial company like Coca-Cola, obviously, or what have you. So I would hope, <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me. So, so other things that we might be able to expect uh, from uh, from your seminar. Um, some talk about vocal direction. Okay. Um, you will need some coaching. I don't care who you are. Uh, right. And the example I give: Michael Jordan, greatest basketball player ever. Guess what? He had a coach. Sure. So every Tim voiceover artist, as well. every voiceover artist is going to need a coach now. Um, here's being a radio guy. Here's one of the things that, uh, I had to learn. I can't, first of all, I can't tell you how many of my radio friends over the years have reached out to me and said, Harry, I want to get into voiceover. And they think that the demos they have of the commercials they've made at the radio station they work at are appropriate to use. And you have to, I joke and call it, we got to have the come to Jesus meeting because no, they're not. When you are competing with someone that's, you know, reading that slick, smooth copy for Macy's or BMW, and you're reading, hey, show up at the cellular store and spin the prize wheel this weekend right. with Hot 105. Hey, 
you know, right. and that's your, you know, or you're the classic rock DJ and here's some Zeppelin and it sounds like I'm baked right now. Yeah. You know, really, okay. you can't use those or, or this is NPR where we whisper practically <laughs> or, funny. you know, or you're the news guy. I'm on 10, 10 wins and I do the news and I talk like this or you're the mobile DJ. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Miss, and you you got that affectation sure. to your voice. I'm sorry. It may be very appropriate for what you're doing or when you're on the radio. It is not appropriate for high quality agency voiceover reads. So you need to have coaching. I had to have radio bashed out of me. I can turn it on in a heartbeat. I always joke whenever I am, you know, officially teaching a class um, and, and, you know, people get a kick out of this. Like, and, and I, and I say, I'm, I'm hardly exaggerating. Here's a radio break. Um, LA's number one hit music station, 102.7 Kiss FM. It's Harry Lag. We're doing 10 songs in a row. Coming up this hour, your chance to win tickets to see Lady Gaga live at the Staples Center. Right now, it's Matchbox 20 on Kiss. When you spend five hours a day, six, five or six days a week right. talking like that, tell me you're going to be capable of doing a sophisticated, proper sounding, conversational read. You're not. And you might think you are but you're not. So, and it's the same thing for all the other formats that I went through. Um, hmm. One of my friends uh, who has gotten into voiceover and has gotten a bunch of coaching, he was the stadium announcer for a minor league team here in town. And he talked like a stadium announcer. And again, so you'll need, everyone's going to need vocal coaching. I will tell you that now. So if you're not up for that, this ain't for you, but if you're up for some vocal coaching, absolutely. Then you're going to need to learn how do you market? How do you find work? Um, all, all those sorts of things. So that's uh, it's all a part of what I will cover. And it's a lot of material to cover in. Uh, what will I have? About an hour around about? Yep, that's correct. That about is correct. Okay. Yep, and it could be done. It could be done in about an hour, but there will be a lot of information. Boom, 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 boom. Great. Right. So. Yeah, That's awesome. Cool. All right. I can't wait. It's excited gonna be about having you. Thank you so much for being on here, saying hello, letting people get to know you. Um, and I can't wait for June, man. It's going to be fantastic. And more so than the show, it's, it's just going to be exciting for our industry to be able to get up, get out. You know, I think that we've been yes. cooped up since March of last year. And, and I'm not, <clears throat> exaggerating when I tell you like Chicago is a beautiful city in the summer. So yeah. getting up, getting out and having a good time, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really going to be a fantastic time and I'm super excited about having you Harry. So thank you so much for being on everybody. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you at the marquee show June 22nd through the 24th. Get your tickets today. Marquee Thank you so much. Awesome. Bye -bye. Thank you, Casey. Uh -huh.